The Book of Genesis, Chapter 6 And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown.
1947, a Bedouin boy was traversing the cliffs along the Dead Sea in Israel's Judean desert, searching for a stray goat. As legend has it, he happened upon a cave burrowed into the face of the limestone. Provoked by curiosity and divine providence, the boy cast a stone into the mouth of the cave. But rather than falling to the arid ground with a thud, as he expected, the stone struck something altogether unexpected, as the unmistakable sound of shattering pottery rang in the air. Upon entering the cave to investigate the source of the sound, this young Bedouin goat herder made what was to become one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. Stowed within large earthen jars were rolls of ancient parchment, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Ten more caves would be discovered in subsequent years, containing many more manuscripts and archaeological artifacts. The Dead Sea Scrolls are a collection of some 981 texts discovered between 1946 and 1956 in the caves of Qumran. The texts, written in Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, and Nabataean, are inscribed predominantly on parchment but also on papyrus and bronze. Due to the poor condition of some of the manuscripts, not all of them have been identified and only fragments of some of them remain. Among the Dead Sea Scrolls are numerous copies of every book in the Hebrew Bible and the Old Testament protocanon, except the Book of Esther. Many apocryphal works are also present, such as the Book of Jubilees, the Genesis Apocryphon, the Book of Noah, the Book of Enoch, and the Book of Giants, all of which were found together in Cave 1 of Qumran. The Book of Giants, composed in Aramaic, is dated with certainty to at least the 2nd century BC, if not much earlier. The content of the manuscript, though severely fragmented, expounds on the narrative of the Book of Enoch concerning the fall of the angelic watchers, their malevolent hybrid offspring, and the great flood that ensued as a result. This particular narrative is not exclusive to the Book of Enoch, but is referenced extensively throughout the Bible in both the Old and New Testament, as well as in many of the apocryphal works, including the books of Jasher and Jubilees, and can be traced throughout the written and oral tradition of every major ancient civilization on the planet. Because the manuscript is eroded and fragmented, its exact contents and their order are uncertain. Nevertheless, much can be deduced from what remains. The Book of Giants describes in detail how the fallen angels insidiously corrupted the genetics of all flesh on the earth. It tells us specifically that 200 donkeys, 200 asses, 200 rams of the flock, 200 goats, 200 beasts of the field, from every animal, from every bird, were selected for miscegenation. The word miscegenation refers to the mixing of races or species, particularly in the context of sexual intercourse. The text that follows makes it abundantly clear that this was no mere act of interspecies breeding, but instead extreme cross-species genetics involving the seed of the angels themselves. They defiled they begot giants and monsters. They begot and behold, all the earth was corrupted. It is important to note that not only were giants begotten of the fallen angels, but also monsters. According to the text, giants and monsters are two very distinct designations. Scripture validates that when angels inseminate human women, giant angel-human hybrid beings are generated. We can infer then that when angels inseminate animals, monstrous angel-animal hybrid beings are generated, varying in appearance according to their respective species. These hybrid monsters could very well have been sentient 
conscious, with the ability to think and reason like us, at least in some cases, probably dependent on the degree of angelic genetic markers present in their genomes. In fact, the notions of sentience among the hybrid monsters seems to be presupposed in a particular section of the manuscript. Thereupon two of them had dreams, and the sleep of their eyes fled from them. And they arose and came to and told their dreams, and said in the assembly of their comrades, the monsters. This text assumes that at least some of the monsters were sentient, because they could hear and understand the words of their comrades, the giants, and presumably speak in their language. Although these monsters were in a sense the stepbrothers of the giants, having the same fathers, they seemed to be of an inferior caste. Whereas their fathers were angelic watchers, their mothers were literally beasts. We can therefore infer that their intellectual capacity was less than that of the giants who were born of human mothers. Furthermore, both the Book of Enoch and the Book of Giants exclusively designates the giants as the children of the angels. The angel-animal hybrid monsters seem to be regarded as offspring, but not direct descendants like the giants. The Book of Enoch and the Book of Giants reveals the particular affection that the Watchers had for their human hybrid children. And inasmuch as they, the Watchers, delight themselves in their children, the giants, the murder of their beloved ones shall they see, and over the destruction of their children shall they lament, and shall make supplication unto eternity. The children of angels are the giants, and they would not let all their loved ones be neglected. Another interesting anecdote in the text is a reference to at least one of the giants having the capability of flight, which is demonstrated when Makwe, son of the watcher Barakel, journeys to consult with Enoch. He mounted up in the air like strong winds and flew with his hands like eagles. He left behind the inhabited world and passed over desolation, the great desert. The phrase, flew with his hands like eagles, could be literal, and that some of the giants might have inherited an innate supernatural ability to travel through the air like their angelic fathers. Alternatively, it might be an allegorical reference to a technology not understood by the writer. This kind of rhetorical device is common when uneducated minds attempt to describe advanced technological concepts such as aeronautics and aerospace craft. The Book of Enoch emphasizes the fact that the Watchers taught their hybrid children the secrets of heaven, which included what we would call advanced physics, mathematics, chemistry, astrology, etc. Hence, the idea that the giants would be capable of manufacturing and operating advanced technology is certainly supported in the narrative. The primary theme and bulk of the content from the Book of Giants concerns a series of ominous dreams and visions that were troubling the titan sons of the Watchers, portents of imminent judgment. Makwe reports the first of these dreams to his fellow giants. He sees a tablet inscribed with many names being immersed in water. When it emerges, all but three names have been washed away. The dream evidently symbolizes the destruction of all but Noah and his two sons and the Great Flood. The following is a brief summary of the story recounted in the Book of Giants, based on the legible fragments that have been reconstructed and supplemented by the Book of the Watchers in First Enoch. Two hundred angelic beings called Watchers made a pact to defy God and descended to the earth in the days of Jared. They took human women as wives and had sexual intercourse with them. Their wives gave birth to hybrid giants. The Watchers taught their wives and children the secrets of heaven, and the human race was beguiled by the forbidden knowledge. The giants began to rule over the inhabitants of the earth. The Watchers chose animals from diverse species, two hundred of each kind, in order to copulate with them and progenerate genetic aberrations. 
The animals conceived hybrid monsters according to their respective species. Nearly all life on the planet became genetically corrupted and flesh-eating. The giants and the monsters terrorized the earth and devoured the human race. The giants began to have foreboding dreams and visions that deeply troubled them. They decided to seek out Enoch to interpret the dreams. Enoch presents them with a copy of the tablet addressed to the Watchers, pronouncing a terrible judgment from God upon them, their wives, and their children. The giants are in denial concerning their inevitable fate. The Watchers come to the assembly of their offspring, and with great sorrow and weeping, verify the terrible judgment written on the tablet. The giants, enticed by an angel of heaven, make war with one another and annihilate themselves. The watchers are bound by the angels of heaven and imprisoned in the abyss. A great flood destroys all life on earth except Noah, his two sons, and their wives. The book of Genesis, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, 2 Samuel, 1 Chronicles, Isaiah, Daniel, Amos, 2 Peter, Jude, the book of Jubilees, the book of Jasher, the Genesis Apocryphon, the book of Noah, the book of Enoch, and many more ancient writings besides, along with the oral tradition of every prime civilization on this planet, confirm the story I just outlined from the book of Giants. At this point in history, only willful ignorance denies it. Reporting for SteveQuail.com, I'm Timothy Alberino, and that's my analysis. In the times before Noah, when angels cast their eyes upon the mortal women and descended upon them, full of lust and evil, few could predict that it was only the beginning of the end. For when the women gave birth with the tainted seed, they did not deliver angels, no but something hideous, terrifying, wicked. These were not the beautiful-faced angels they had come to know, but destructive beasts that not even their angelic fathers wished to raise. And who's to say fatherhood would have made such a difference? For these beasts, these monsters, these giants as they were, were hell-bent on destroying the world, consuming its food, and tearing apart anyone who stood in their way. But to say they were devoid of all goodness would be wrong, for at least one among them considered their actions, one amongst them deliberated against right and wrong, one amongst them beheld the visions of a holy higher power. Marwe, he was called, but would the doubt of his brother's violent actions be enough to atone for the monstrosities that were committed? Could entrust in the human known as Enoch be the key to their salvation? Or would the giants be made to face the furies of the fires all the same? If you think the Book of Enoch is interesting, wait until you hear the Book of Giants. The Book of Giants was discovered in 1947 in the Dead Sea Scrolls discovery. The manuscript is dated to the 2nd century BC at the earliest, but could be much older. The same narratives as mentioned in the Book of Enoch of the fallen angels, their corruption of mankind, and their destruction through the flood of Noah is mentioned all throughout the Book of Giants. The scroll was found deteriorating, leaving only fragments of text, but the pieces of text we do have hold incredible information. The Book of Giants describes in great detail detail the fallen angels corrupting the genetics of all flesh that was on the earth. It tells us specifically in one of the fragments, fragment 1Q23 1 plus 6, 200 donkeys, 200 asses, 200 rams of the flock, 200 goats, 200 beasts of the field, from every animal, from every bird, were selected for miscegenation. Miscegenation refers to the mixing of races or species, particularly in the context of sexual intercourse. The next text that follows makes it absolutely clear that this wasn't referring to different species breeding with each other, but actual cross-species genetics involving the seed of the fallen angels themselves. It's important to notice that giants and monsters are referred to in unique, distinct references. We know from Genesis 6-4 that when humans and angels mated together, that the offspring they produced was giant humans, half-human, half-fallen angel. Fragment 4Q5312 
They defiled, they begot giants and monsters. They begot and behold, all the earth was corrupted. Through this, we can come to the conclusion that these fallen angels were breeding with animals and their offspring would be half animal and half fallen angel and very large in size. This reality would make sense with all the ancient depictions of monsters and creatures. Maybe those creatures weren't figments of their imagination, but actual half human, half fallen angel monsters roaming the earth. These beings maybe could have even held the capacity to think and reason just like the giants could. We know that giants have the capability to hold conversations because of the account of Goliath challenging and enticing the armies of Israel in 1 Samuel 17 8-10. A fragment of the book of giants also confirms some of these monsters having the ability to reason and communicate when some of the giants had dreams of their destruction and shared these dreams with the monsters. Fragment 4Q530 column 2 Thereupon two of them had dreams, and the sleep of their eyes fled from them, and they arose and came to, and told their dreams, and said in the assembly of their comrades, the monsters. These monsters didn't hold the same connection to the fallen angels as the giants. The book of giants and the book of Enoch describes the fallen angels' close connection to their children, the giants. Whereas these monsters were their offspring, they weren't cared for as deeply by the fallen angels as the giants were. Here's a verse from the book of Enoch. And inasmuch as they, the watchers, delight themselves in their children, the giants, the murder of their beloved ones shall they see, and over the destruction of their children shall they lament, and shall make supplication unto eternity. The book of giants, fragment 4Q530, fragment 7. The children of angels are the giants, and they would not let their loved ones be neglected. All throughout the book of giants, the giant children offspring of the fallen angels and humankind were having ominous dreams of their destruction. One of the giants has a dream of a tablet with many names submerged under water, and when lifted from the water only three names remained. This dream symbolizes the destruction of all the unpure fallen life forms on the earth through the flood of Noah. The great flood of Noah now makes sense. Noah, his family, and the animals that were brought onto the ark were brought on not because of their righteousness, but because the rest of creation had been corrupted by the fallen angels and their genetic manipulations.
The existence of giants here is confirmed. This was written in a letter to the French Academy of Sciences in 1766 by Dr. Matthew Matty, the secretary of the British Royal Society. He was referring to the confirmation of giants at the southern end of South America by English explorer John Byron. But reports of giants in this part of the world went back more than two centuries. Let's go to rarematps.com and take another look at a map we talked a bit about a month ago. This is a 1544 map of the Americas by Sebastian Munster. In the video last month, we covered the Sea of Verrazano and the story behind its discovery. But there are more interesting features on this map, one of which are the Latin words Regio Gigantum. This translates to the region of giants. This map isn't alone. If we search the term giants, depictions of giants in the same region pop up. Giants certainly don't live here today, so who were these giants and what happened to them? The first sightings by Europeans of these giants was in 1520 by Ferdinand Magellan and his crew on his circumnavigation of the world. Magellan was killed before making it back to Spain, but his assistant Antonio Pigafetta wrote this. One day we saw a naked man of giant structure on the shore of the port dancing, singing, and throwing dust on his head. When the giant was in the captain general's and our presence, he marveled greatly and made signs with one finger raised upwards believing that we had come from the sky. He was so tall that we reached only to his waist, and he was well proportioned. Magellan named these giants Patagons. While Pigafetta never explained Magellan's reasons for the name, it's been long assumed that Pata came from a Portuguese and Spanish word to mean foot, though he may have taken the name from a literary figure in a Spanish novel of the early 16th century. Either way, the name eventually stuck, and the region became known as Patagonia, which is interpreted to mean land of the big feet. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites call them Zamtumims, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead.